All right, let's talk about who we are. For the longest time, maybe most of history, human beings who were thoughtful and uh, responsible and mature understood that they have an option. They have free choice. You can be good or you can be bad. You can be beautiful and you can be ugly. You can be high, idealistic, or you can be low, greedy and selfish. Those were the options. And in Judaism, that was known as the Yetzirah and the Yetzatov, the good inclination and the evil inclination. One side of me wants to be good and the other side wants to be bad. So what were the choices? Good, bad, ugly or beautiful, high or low, uh, constructive or destructive. So good people, intelligent people, chose to do things that are constructive, that are helpful, that make your life better, that make your relationships better. productive. And people who were not so good did things that were not so productive, more destructive, and caused lots of problems for themselves and for others. The result was that we lived our lives based on reward and punishment. If I do this, will it reward me? Will it make me smarter, stronger, more popular, more lovable, that's the reward. And then there's the punishment. If I do bad things, ugly things, lowly things, the punishment is gonna be, I'm gonna be less popular, I'm gonna be less lovable, I'm gonna be less respected. That's it, that's life, that's all of life. And even when we discovered psychology, and we found out the deeper layers of who we are, we only discovered that we care about these things a lot more than we thought. That if you're not popular, it may bother you a little bit in your mind, but it bothers you a lot subconsciously. But the issue was the same. Hasidus came along and said, that's not really what you should be worried about, and that's not really who you are. There's something much prettier, much more elegant, much more worthy of life. And that is that you have actually two souls. That's who you are. It's not you could be good, you could be bad. That, that has more to do with your behavior. Sure, you can behave well or you can behave badly. That doesn't tell you who you are. In other words, to tell a person, you are the option of right or wrong, good or bad. You can be good, you can be bad. That's it. That's who I am. Being bad is part of who I am. So I'm half good and half bad. I'm half beautiful and half ugly. That can't be. That can't be a description of me. I'm capable of being good and I'm capable of being bad. But who am I? So Hasidus came, beginning with the Alta Rebbe about 200 years ago, and he said, you know, this is not a good definition. And it's not really the primary struggle in life, to be good or to be bad. You know, you tell your children when they're very young, bad is bad, don't be bad, be good. That should be enough for the rest of their lives. 
to spend your entire life trying to not be bad? First of all, that's a little depressing. At every moment I could be bad and I have to be careful not to be bad. That makes me pretty bad. If that's my definition, it's discouraging and it's confusing. Because, you know, you can be bad one minute and good the next minute. Now, who, who am I really? Seems a little schizophrenic. Who's the real me? And if the real me is bad, that's really, wow. That's, that's seriously depressing. Because it's not true. You can do bad. That's how talented you are. <laughs> but who are you? You're not half good and half bad. That's way too negative. Another thing, good and bad, if it matters to you, where does it affect you? You say to a child, you're a bad boy. Where is, where is the effect on the child? On his emotions. Good and bad is kind of an emotional issue. Because bad is a little scary and good is a little comforting. It's an emotional issue. Ugly and beautiful, that's an emotional issue. If I'm ugly, I'm depressed and, and sad. And if I'm beautiful, I'm optimistic and I'm, and I'm um, proud. Reward and punishment is certainly an emotional thing. When you tell somebody you're going to get punished, where does it touch the person? In his emotions. So all of life, the way it was before the Alter Rebbe, all of life was lived on an emotional level. What appeals to your emotions or what scares your emotions? The Alter Rebbe lifted us into a much more beautiful identity. The Alter Rebbe says you have two souls. What is a soul? A soul is an energy and an excitement. When you have two souls, you have two excitements. Two kinds of excitement. And what is excited? If you understand human, human beings, what's excited is either your pleasure or your will. You're excited in that you want something or your intelligence. You understand something and it's exciting or your feelings. You love something and that's exciting. Or you hate something, that's exciting too. It takes a lot of energy. And then there's your behavior. So you can be excited to do something, you can be excited to say something, and you can be excited to think something. So now, what is a soul? A soul is that energy that excites either your pleasure or your will, or your mind, or your heart, or your behavior, or all of the above. If we say that we have two souls, I mean, this is really amazing. Two souls means I have two energies that excite my pleasure and my will and my intelligence and my emotions and my behavior. One of the souls is godly, which means it gets excited to godly pleasure, godly will, godly wisdom, godly emotions, and godly behavior. 
that's a totally godly person. Because with those with those aspects of your of your of your soul, you're a complete person. So the godly soul is a complete person. And, and then there's the human soul. The human soul is an excitement. Also, pleasure, will, wisdom, emotions, and behavior. But in the human soul, it's all human pleasure, human will, human intelligence, human emotions, and human behavior. So now, who are you? You are a being that can choose between being human or being godly. Of course, you're capable of, of being bad. You're capable of sinning. That's not who you are. That's one of the capabilities. But who are you? You are on the on the crossroad on, on the on the on the choice. You're standing always on the choice between human and godly, not between good and bad. Bad is not part of who you are. You are either human or godly. There's the human part of you. There's the godly part of you. To put it in simple words, what is the difference between my human part and my godly part? My human part is selfish. It's always about me. I gotta be me. What's best for me? How do I protect myself? All about me. The godly soul is all about a mission. What am I here for? What am I supposed to accomplish? Who am I supposed to help? Who created me and why? That's the godly soul. So for example, the human soul takes great pleasure in doing a good job and earning a big check. Did well, you're a mensch, you're a successful human being. The godly soul gets pleasure when he can give that money away to someone who needs it more. So in simple language, the human soul is about yourself and your godly soul is about who you can help and how you can make the world better. By, by serving the purpose for which you exist. So the Rebbe says, you really should put all your energy into your godly soul. Because if you put all your energy into your human soul, you will become a really decent human being, a fantastic human being an impressive human being. But when you become a really fantastic, impressive human being, you will suddenly ask yourself, what was that all for? Yes, I worked hard and I succeeded. People think highly of me. I get respect. People like me. I'm great. But what for? What for? What did I do all this for? So it sounds something like this. I, I am born. I have to grow up. I have to accomplish something. I have to help myself. I got to develop myself. I've got to become something and I've got to protect myself a lot. And I do all of that successfully. So I've protected myself and I've gotten everything I need and I lived up to my human potential. Wonderful. But then you have this question, 
What was that for? So what? It's like you're born a human being. You work hard at being a human being. You're successful as a human being. And then, then what? It seems like a dead end. I tell you this little story or, or illustration. This guy says to God, you know, I worked hard all my life. I'm trying my best. I'm struggling. I'm doing everything. And, and I, I have no life. I, I have $20 in my pocket. And that's all I, I have no life. Give me a life. So God says, you have $20? Yeah. Give me the $20 and I'll give you a life. So the man says, okay, well, but if I give you the $20, I won't have money to put gas in my car. God says, you have a car. Give me the car and give me the $20 and I'll give you a life. The man says, okay, but, but if I give you my car, how am I going to get to work? God says, oh, you have a job. Give me the job, give me the car, give me the $20, and I'll give you a life. So the man says, okay, but wait, if I give you my job, how am I going to be able to pay the mortgage? God says, you have a house? Give me the house, give me the job, give me the car, give me the $20, and I'll give you a life. So the man says, all right, but wait, if I give you the house, where will my family live? And God says, you have a family? Give me the family, give me the house, give me the job, give me the car, give me the $20, and I'll give you a life. The guy says, okay, and gives it all to God. Then God says, here, here's $20. Here's a car. Here's a job. Here's a house. Here's a family. Now you have a life. So what happened here? A guy is complaining, I have no life. <laughs> it turns out that he does have a life. So what was he complaining about? He didn't realize that he has a life. How does that happen? How can a person who has a life feel like he doesn't have a life? So instead of going through that whole, pl that whole spiel with the $20 and the car and the God should have said, I'll heal your brain and you'll realize that you have a life. A person who has a life still needs to know what that life is for. What's the point? What's the purpose? I have a family, I have a, a house, I have a job, I have a car and I have cash. And then, so what? What is it all for? That's your godly soul asking. So your human soul is content. The man knows that he's a mensch. But he doesn't understand what the whole thing was for. What is the purpose? Let's put it in different words. We all know what works and what doesn't work. We know what makes us healthy, what makes us sick. We know what makes us happy and what makes us miserable. We know what works. We know what gives us pleasure, what gives us pain. We know that. 
if you live a life absolutely perfect, which means you always do what gives you pleasure, you never do anything that gives you pain. You always do what makes you more successful, never what makes you a failure. You always do what works, never what doesn't work. You would be a perfect human being. but you're living on a totally emotional level. What works means what feels right. So your whole life is feelings. This feels good, this feels bad. This feels important, this feels unimportant. It's all feeling. A human being who is intelligent is never happy with that because the intelligence is asking for something different. Never mind what works. Tell me why. Even if it works, why do, why do I have to do it? Why do I have to make my life work? Because it could also fail? Well, then I don't understand the whole point. So God makes you a human being and says you can either succeed or fail. I don't like that. What's, what's the point? I succeed in order not to fail? I'm living my life out of fear, fear of failure, of rejection, of disease, of punishment. It's too emotional. I need some intelligence that explains why I'm here. What's the point? Where, what am I accomplishing by being a successful human being? So this is who we really are. We are created human, but we can also become godly. Let, let's put it in different words. When a kid is in a bad mood and you ask him to do something, it has become very common for a kid to say, leave me alone, I didn't ask to be born. Clean up your room. I didn't ask to be born. Get dressed in time for the bus and get to school on time. I didn't ask to be born. What, what is that reaction? I didn't ask to be born. He's not, he's not necessarily depressed. He's just stating a, a, a simple fact. I didn't ask to be born. Actually, nobody asks to be born. So if your kid ever says to you, I didn't ask to be born, you should say, well, neither did I. I didn't ask to be born either. So then let's sit down together and figure out how this mess happened. We didn't ask to be born, but we are born. So. What's going on? See, it doesn't make sense. If I didn't ask to be born, it means I never promised to do anything. I never signed any contract. I never made any kind of an agreement. So why do I have to get up and go to school? Why do I have to clean up the room? I didn't ask to be born. How did I suddenly become responsible for things? It's a very good question. And religiously, the question is, God creates me without asking me, and I didn't ask to be born, and I don't want to be born, and I don't need to be born, but God puts me into this world and says, if you don't behave yourself, I'm going to punish you. Hey, hey, what kind of deal is that? What kind of deal is that?
It's like somebody invites you to a very expensive restaurant and orders the most expensive food and then tells you to pay for it. And if you don't pay for it, you're going to jail. <laughs> Whoa, what happened here? So imagine you're invited to this very expensive restaurant. And while you're there at the restaurant, you are a perfect human being. You eat like a mensch. You sit like a mensch. You talk like a mensch. You do everything right. You're such an impressive person. And then they say, okay, you pay the bill. All of a sudden, being an impressive human being is beside the point. So what if you're a good person? So what if you sat like a mensch and ate like a mensch? You even made a bracha before and you benched after. So what? Why do I have to pay the bill? That's your godly soul. Your human soul tells you to sit like a mensch and eat like a mensch and talk like a mensch. But your godly soul says, I didn't ask for any of this. So why do I have to pay the bill? In simple language, being a successful human being is not enough. So we spend all the years, every waking moment worrying, am I a mensch, am I good, am I beautiful, am I successful, am I popular? And what if the answer is yes to all of the above? Then, then, then you're okay? Good enough? It's not good enough. Usually people realize this when they retire when they're old. Today, children are realizing this at 10 or 11 years old. They're already saying, I didn't ask to be born, which is a very, very good question. So fine, I'll clean up my room. I still don't know why I was born. So I'll go to school and I'll get good grades. I'll get a good report card. And I'll even get into the best college. I still don't understand why I was born. So the only, the only source of knowledge that can answer the question, why am I here? Why was I born? The only place to get an answer to that is in your godly soul. Because your godly soul just wants to do whatever it, whatever the reason for its existence in this world, whatever mission the soul is supposed to accomplish by being born, that's all the godly soul ever thinks about. There's one other way of thinking about it. The human soul chooses what works. The godly soul wants to know what's true. I know what's good, but that's not the same as true. It's good to be healthy. It's good to be successful. It's good to be rich. It is, it's good. And it's good to be kind and decent and honest, all good. But is that true? What's true? When we ask, for example, which is the true religion? There are so many religions, and they all say they're true, but which one is true? So let's say, just hypothetically, if you follow any religion, you're going to be a good person. Unless the religion teaches you to hate, but 
again, hypothetically, any religion is going to tell you to be moral, to be good, to be smart, to be... So now you want to know which is the true religion. Why do you care? What difference does it make whether something is true? As long as it works, what else do you need? As long as it works, your human soul will be content. But your godly soul is still going to ask, but what's the truth? The purpose for which we exist, that's the truth behind everything. If there is no purpose, if we were not created for any particular reason, then there is no truth. It's whatever works. You know, we're trying to evolve. We're part of the evolution process. So you try to evolve as successfully as possible. Survival of the fittest. What's true? Nothing's true. There are just things that work and things that don't work. The godly soul is not content with what works. I worked very hard and I succeeded. I don't know why I went through that whole thing. I don't know why I was born. I don't know why I had to work. And I don't know what to do with my success. So now what? That's why rich people get depressed more than poor people. Because a rich person already accomplished what works. Now what? The poor person is still very busy trying to find what works. So, you want to know yourself? Here is who you really are. You can be practical and successful as a human being, or you can be idealistic and find the truth of why you exist in the first place. And that's called serving the purpose, fulfilling the purpose, for which you exist. That's serving your creator. Your creator has a reason for you to exist. So if you fulfill that reason, you are serving him, you are becoming godly, and you are fulfilling the purpose for which you exist. But here's the final clincher. The difference between the human soul and the godly soul. The human soul always feels needy. I need this, I need that. I have to have some of those, I have to have some of these. I need to get here, I need to go there, I need to see this and I need to see that. It's so needy. I need friends and I need approval and I need therapy and I need pills and I need I need drugs. I just need and need and need endlessly. That's the human condition. The godly condition is, I am needed by my family. I am needed by my community. I am needed by my creator. I am needed by the universe because without me, the universe won't be complete. And so I'm always busy serving doing what I am needed for. So the human soul is needy. The godly soul knows that it is needed. That's our choice in life. Good and bad shouldn't be a daily choice. Once in a while you'll be tempted to be bad. But that's the exception. That's the embarrassing part. We're not always on the verge of sinning. The choice every day is, am I going to act needy, 
like a human being? Or am I going to fulfill what I am needed for and serve a greater purpose? Those are your two souls, and that's who you are. It's a much nicer picture. Much, much more complementary 